Welcome to the Audio Codes Training Academy. This video tutorial will show you how to use the Audio Codes Boot P utility to recover a media pack or media device. The Audio Codes Boot P utility is available from the Audio Codes website when you are a registered user. This requires installation on a Microsoft Windows platform. We suggest that you obtain Audio Codes LTRT30504 AC Boot P Utility User's Guide for more details on installing and configuring the AC Boot P Utility for your network. The Boot P Utility is simple to install and operate. There are essentially four steps to install, configure, and operate the AC Boot P Utility. The installation file is a Microsoft installer which when run will install the utility on your PC. Once the installation has begun, just follow the steps to complete the installation. The next step is to configure the utility. To begin, click on the Preferences tab. A root directory with a CMP, INI, and other auxiliary files will be stored must be configured. All other files need to be in the same directory for the boot P utility to use them. In the example shown here, a directory called firmware loads was created on the C drive. Now, identify which network interface will be used for the utility. Select the network interface drop-down and select the interface to be used. It is necessary that the network interface being used is live when the AC Boot P utility is started so that the NIC will be bound to it. Lastly, ensure that the appropriate firmware range is defined. This allows the Boot P application to send a reset to the devices that are loaded within that range. Next, add a client to the Boot P server. Select the Client Configuration tab and then select Add a New Client button. Add the device's Mac. This is found on a label either on the bottom of the device's chassis or on the faceplate of the trunk pack module such as on a Mediant 2000 or 3000. The client name field is optional, but identifies to the administrator where the device is located, or who the customer is, or what its function might be. Add the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway. If the boot P server is directly connected to the media or media pack, the gateway is not required. The TFTP server IP address will automatically populate from the network interface defined in the preferences tab. Select the CMP file to load onto the device and ensure flash burn is selected. Without it selected, the firmware load is loaded into RAM and is not stored on flash. Lastly, select the configuration file to load. For media packs and older media devices, this will load a configuration file when boot P is executed. For newer media devices, an INI file cannot be selected as these devices only support rescue mode. Click apply to save the changes. On the monitoring screen several tools are available. The one main feature used is the pause play button. Once the green play button has been selected the device is ready to receive boot P requests. Now you're ready to boot P device. When the device powers up or is physically reset it broadcasts a boot P request message on the network. A boot P server on the network receives a message and generates a boot P reply if the device has successfully identified according to its MAC address. The boot P reply indicates the network parameters that must be used by the device and optionally specifies the INI and CMP file names and the IP address of the TFTP server from which these files must be loaded. As you are monitoring the device, the screen will update to indicate the progress of the firmware download, the INI file, and any additional auxiliary files. Expand the new IP file column to verify the file names downloaded. We hope you have found this video useful. If you need more information, you can download our documents from www.audiocuds.com library.